Since the often overlooked uh, psychological problems associated with pregnancy and childbirth continue to drive many pregnant women and childless women into depression and psychiatric institutions. 38-year-old Sika, whose journey has been marred by such challenges, has been sharing the reality of maternal mental health struggles. We just send a report read to you. The arrival of Sika's child brought immense joy to her, having lost her first child. After that painful loss of her first child, she found herself under intense pressure from her husband's family to safeguard her second baby at all costs. Consumed by the weight of this expectation, she entered a state of hypervigilance inadvertently plunging into severe clinical depression. So I had a miscarriage during my first pregnancy. And when I became pregnant again, I was extremely cautious. Hmm. I was afraid of judgment from my husband and his family because we didn't have a baby since five years when we got married. Everything Everyone irritated me, including my husband. I would spend hours in front of the mirror, not appreciating my body. Instead of receiving the understanding and support she desperately needed, Sika faced harsh judgment from her family and mother-in-law, who labelled her as mentally unstable and insisted on confining her to a psychiatric hospital. My mother-in-law then thought I was mentally ill and suggested keeping the baby away from me. Globally, about 10% of pregnant women and 13% of women who have just given birth experience some form of mental disorder, primarily due to depression. In severe cases, these mothers suffering from depression might experience severe symptoms that are likely to force them to commit suicide. According to the World Health Organization, about 50 to 57 percent of women suffer from maternal mental health issues in Ghana, with depression being the most common. Lead consultant for the WHO Maternal Mental Health Dissemination Project, Dr. Promise Sefoga explains the various systems of the condition and attributed the prevalence to a lack of screening and policy. The pregnant woman processes a lot of different thoughts across various things, including questions that she keeps on her mind. How is my baby growing? Is the baby going to be a baby boy or a baby girl? I would rather wish it was a boy. I would rather wish it was a girl. These are the things that matter to the pregnant woman. Yeah. So all these can depress the mood sometimes during the course of pregnancy. Okay. And of course, some pregnancies get to develop other complications, which can all affect how the pregnant woman behaves. Mm -hmm. Just recently, some other work in Boku found the prevalence as high as 50.4%, meaning that virtually one out of every two pregnant women suffered postpartum depression or perinatal depression, which is what we call it now in Ghana. The program's officer for non-communicable diseases and mental health at the WHO Ghana country office Dr. Joanna Ansong laments deep concerns over the insufficient focus on the psychological well-being of pregnant women. The global community has paid a lot of attention to issues relating to maternal health, to the neglect of maternal mental health. That is, um, in essence, we are looking at the health and well-being of a pregnant woman through pregnancy to labor to the postpartum period. But we forget that when we define health, it also includes mental health. The burden of maternal mortality drops significantly and we are neglecting issues relating to the mental well-being of the mother and also the infant. I isolated myself 
locking out, I lock myself up in a room, trying to stay away from everybody. In severe cases of maternal mental health, some women kill their babies. The growth physically and mentally of very young infants is likely to be affected by mothers with mental disorders. Prolonged or severe mental illnesses hamper the mother-infant attachment, breastfeeding and infant care. 